Okay. Wonderful. Hello, how are you doing? Human beings are incredibly intellectually unevolved. And of course we think we're really smart because we have these neat little things called computers and we think we're so smart. Yes, we do. And we got microwaves and all sorts of stuff. And here's an interesting fact. Every epoch of human understanding has always thought, man, we got it going on. We know exactly how the universe works, or mostly so. And every uh, 50 years, roughly, it seems to be about every 50 years. It can be longer, it could actually be less, depending on discoveries. Uh, science thinks it has a firm handle on things. And every 40 to 50 years, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, uh, science completely does a paradigm shift on itself, and it acknowledges that the group before them were completely full of BS and had no idea what the hell was going on. The current form of BS that we have a belief system in is quantum. Of course, the term quantum, and I know all about the history of where quantum originated, of course, specifically refers to quantity, i.e. atomism, and of course that's all quantum is, is atomistic thought. Um, quantum has absolutely no basis in reality. It doesn't affirm anything. However, people engaged in the fallacy of reification, um, specifically also uh, the fallacy of composition, and stating, well, there are several devices that actually are quantum devices, and this, of course, validates uh, quantum. And it actually does no specific thing. I could actually say that my microwave is a quantum heating device, but that's not a uh, reification or a justification for the accuracy of quantum. This is uh, completely inaccurate. Uh, the term quantum does not refer to anything at all. So everybody keeps asking about quantum computers, and so-called quantum computers are actually electrostatic and electrical devices. They're also magnetic, of course. Um, there's no such thing as anything that runs off of quantum. Any and all so-called uh, quantum phenomena observances is based upon the theory. The fallacy of composition, of course, is stating, well, I made a theory, I made this discovery, and uh, the math validates it. Well, it does not. Let's actually talk about the fallacy of reification and uh, also uh, um, fallacy of composition. And I'm going to actually quote a couple. Two of these people are PhDs in uh, quantum uh, physics. And let me give you one quote here. It says, uh, someone's answering this guy, this guy, PhD in quantum physics, asking, uh, answering another person who was calling quantum nonsense, which of course quantum is nonsense. If by nonsense you mean lacks experimental evidence, then absolutely not. Quantum mechanics has been validated experimentally. Oh, interesting word there, validated. Don't confuse the word theory. It simply means mathematical model. Far, many, far too many people take this to mean unproven. Two really uh, specious words in this statement by this PhD in quantum. Yeah, is the word validation, and he is making reference to proven when he said the other guy said it's unproven. No, it's proven. Well, quantum doesn't prove anything. It provides the math for experiment uh, replication, but that's not a ver verification for quantum. If by unproven they mean that the math has been verified, and uh, also uh, peer-reviewed and replicated all over the world. That's uh, for an accurate effect and a prediction. That's one thing. But a theory and uh, repetition of an experiment or replication of the math has absolutely no bearing on correct theory, and it has no bearing on a correct explanation. Um, by unproven, I mean explicitly that the math nor the theory at all, are an accurate explanation of fields or phenomena. No branch of current science or of quantum has ever defined really important terms like field and energy. Yeah, and if you even do a Wikipedia search, so this is not my, see if I tell you this, you're going to think this is crazy BS, but this is not my idea, it's their idea. And their idea, by their own words and mouth and typewriters or pencils, keyboards, if you will, is that uh, what is going on outside and around a magnet is virtual photons. Or you can look up, just Google the word virtual photons or virtual particles in parentheses, yeah? It'll take you to a lot of different quantum uh, theory, PhD, a lot of professional papers. So, well, what's going on in a magnet is the emission of, not my words, there is the emissions of virtual particles, virtual, I should have said particles, which sounds even better. I meant to say particles. <laughs> 
<laughs> I call them farticles because that's what they are. They're atomistic. atomistic. They are atomists by definition, both denotation and connotation. But of course, virtual particles or virtual photons, as they sometimes call them, are not the input or output of any experiment ever done, and they are literally there to make their math equations balance out. These are not rational explanations, they're not logical, and they're not part of any experiment ever done. But they're the fundamental uh, cornerstone of uh, quantum mechanics. Also, too, their definition of what they think uh, light is. Um, validating the math is not a validation of a theory or the insane explanations of, uh, of uh, quantum uh, atomistic uh, brain-dead individuals. Descriptions are not explanations. The Greeks had, ex I mean, excuse me, the ancient Egyptians had extremely accurate math uh, for uh, uh, doing countless things which even we today do not understand. However, their explanations for those, you know, were the gods or this and this was that, and of course really, really uh, bizarre uh, mystical uh, explanations that was their explanation for how these things worked. I mean, they had uh, better uh, charts on uh, when the, the, the sun would rise and fall and where it would set as we really do today. I mean, that wasn't even able to be replicated until very recent history, and these guys were doing it many, many countless millennia ago. But their math has no bearing on their crazy, insane explanations as to cosmic mechanics from their view of this God did this, this God did that, and you know, this sort of crazy, you know, none was the sky. And these, of course, are not merely uh, metaphysical or mystical symbolisms. They actually meant that literally. I mean, even by the estimations of any and all Egyptologists, and there's nothing contradictory vis-a-vis uh, -vis that premise uh, from anybody that's ever written anything, saying, well, that's just merely symbolism. The Greeks actually said that, uh, Plotinus and uh, Aristotle and Plato, that the gods were merely represent, uh, representative names, uh, for these uh, cosmic principles, but not the uh, ancient Egyptians. Well, that could be the case, but we can't actually make inferences on this. So we have discovery or theory. We have what is repeatable, and then we have assumed explanations. Theory, experimentation, math for repetition and repeated by other people. And then, of course, we have assumed answers. Quantum doesn't give answers to anything. It's completely illogical. The countless notions that uh, they, they reify, uh, they've never defined a field. Everything is fields and fields are not particles, but they are by their very nature atomistic. Um, quantum's fundamental found, uh, foundation and cornerstone, because you can only build, and I've said this twice, and there's not a single person on this earth that can deny me on this bold statement, yet extremely simple one, is that you can only build two foundations of a house, i.e. a... Uh, a cosmic plan of the universe. You can build a foundation upon the ether, or you can build it upon bumping particles. There's only those two, but throughout the entirety of human history, yeah, other than like, you know, gods barfed up the world and, you know, really crazy ass stuff like that, right? We're not talking about that. Eh? Talking about something that's halfway logical, halfway sensible. Throughout the entirety of human history, there's only been two assumed foundations. Uh, to ultimate reality or the nature of uh, cosmic mechanics, and one has been on the ether, yeah, enjoined by James Kirk Maxwell, Nikola Tesla, Faraday, uh, Plato, Plotinus, Aristotle, you know, the greatest minds who ever lived, and then the, the cult of bumping particles, where everything is a, a mutual interaction of 10 zillion different... Uh, uh, good. Uh, we got charm particles, up, par uh, up quark, down quark. <laughs> oh, God, so I'm sorry. Every time I think of this stuff, I, I just laugh. But there are only those two premises of foundation throughout all of human history. One of them works, and the other one is insane nonsense of the highest order. But fundamentally, quantum is uh, its uh, absolute base foundation is not merely atomism, but right underneath that is their understanding of the nature of light. This is not my idea, this is their own admission. So one of the fundamental premises of quantum is our understanding of the nature of light, but they have absolutely no idea what light is. Getting back to math, math only quantizes things for repetition and accuracy. And by the way, there's a huge difference between math and arithmetic. Arithmetic as enjoined by the Pythagoreans, the Platonists, and the Neoplatonists. There's a huge difference between math and arithmetic. arithmetic. Um, math has never explained anything. Neither does quantum. 
quantum actually tries to explain things with really ridiculous, absurd stuff that's even, by their own admission, even the so-called experts in this crazy belief system, and it is a belief system, it's a silly-ass religion, they even call their stuff stranger than Alice in Wonderland. If you type in quantum and Alice in Wonderland, you'll find all these PhD professors of quantum saying, yeah, this crazy-ass stuff is even crazier than Alice in Wonderland. But it works. No, it doesn't. Because what people are calling works, and this is really important if you're watching me right now, what they call works is the math. But na math never explains anything. Math has never explained anything. Math is not about explanations. It's about repetition and counting. Math is not an explanation because descriptions, and that's all math is, is descriptive, is not an explanation. Well, we can repeat this. This validates quantum. It does not validate quantum. It's ridiculous. I can make a discovery, something new, a new phenomena, right? Here's a new phenomena. I've got the math. Go replicate the math. Someone replicates the math. They get the same result. And then I have, at the very uh, cherry on top of the, uh, of the cake, or ice cream, if you will, an insane explanation. The explanation is completely unconnected to the theory. It's unconnected to the math. Quantum, the ideas of quantum, not the math, not the phenomena, not the repeatability, the ideas, i.e. the explanations of quantum mechanics, is a crazy-ass explanation with correct math. People think that one necessitates the other. Well, if I have repeatable uh, results and I have correct math that makes accurate predictions, this is verification of my insane theory. No, it doesn't. It, it absolutely... The photoelectric effect is a perfect example of that. Yeah? Old Albert Einstein and the photoelectric effect. Isn't that wonderful? This is repeatable. I'm going to make a prediction. We well, found out. Here's an observation. And I've got an explanation. You win a, uh, win a Nobel Prize for that. Well, the observation and the accuracy and the repeatability is not in question. I would be, have to be a brain-dead moron to deny either the math or the repeatability. However, the explanation is completely up for grabs. You have to be a clear thinker to arrive at a correct explanation of things. There are many things that are discovered but that has no bearing on the repeatability. It has uh, no bearing on, excuse me, it has bears upon the repeatability and the math thereof, but it has no bearing upon uh, the accurate uh, explanation thereof of the phenomena and or the discovery. Getting back to light. But anyway, the notion that the fallacy of quantum must, the fallacy that quantum must exist because several devices are called quantum and that the math works is not proof or validity of the ideas of quantum because they're not even by their own admission they're uh, and it's a belief system that's all it is is a belief system there's no such thing as a quantum device well sure there is quantum computers there you go right there it's not those are, devices are electrical they're specifically uh, electrostatic i.e. dielectric and magnetic they are phenomenal devices that run off of electricity Electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. Five times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. Yeah. It's not quantum anything. If that proves quantum, then my microwave is a quantum heating device. There's probably somebody out there that would agree with that. You're right. Your microwave is a quantum heating device. Anyway, if you actually... This is another uh, point someone made, getting onto the double slit experiment. And this is the fallacy. This is a huge example of a fallacy because I get asked, well, I got like four or five videos on the double slit experiment. Of course, it's only about constructive and destructive interference of an ether perturbation. That's the only thing the double slit experiment proves. It is extremely simple. You've got all these brain dead dumbasses trying to figure out the uh, output or the effect of the, uh, of the double slit experiment. But they've started out with a completely fallacious, actually a string of them, eight fallacious suppositions about the nature of light. Here's the serious, serious issue, and no one's ever talked about this in any article, and no one has ever talked about this in any video on YouTube or anywhere. Not my opinion, in fact. Nobody has ever talked about this anywhere. They will debate the experiment of the double slit experiment. They will debate the output of the double slit experiment, yeah? We're going to debate this, we're going to debate this, but what they never debate 
is what exists over here before the experiment begins. And that is the assumption, in this case, the many, many false assumptions on the double slit experiment, which is that we, before we start this experiment and we debate this experiment and the output of this experiment, we already know what light is. And they haven't got a single goddamn clue what it is. Literally, every YouTube video and every article you will ever read on the double slit experiment, go look it up. You can't prove me wrong because I'm 100% right. Is only debating the experiment and the output of the experiment. Now I'm about to tell you the important part, which is the supposition, the fallacious idea, the belief system that starts before the experiment starts, and that is as to the nature of light. They think that light is a particle, it's a wave, it's a wave particle duality, it's got a speed, it's moving from point. Here's a fact. Here's actually eight facts regarding light. Nothing emits light. Yeah? Nothing emits light. Sure it does. What sort of crazy uh, crack are you smoking? Well, if you stick a person in the middle of the pond and you have them flap their arms and they create perturbations in the waves, is the person emitting anything? No! They're not. They're actually expending calories. They're moving their arms in the water. They're disturbing the medium <coughs> ether. There we go. Nothing emits light. It's an ether perturbation. Light is not a particle. No, it is not. This is a misapprehension of the compression and rarefaction of the longitudinal dielectric pulse perturbation that is a one third of uh, the nature of light, which is a coaxial circuit, transverse electrical magnetic, linear, linear polarization or circular polarization doesn't make any difference. And the uh, longitudinal dielectric pulse perturbation that is light. So those rarefactions and compressions along the dielectric, kind of like beads on a necklace, is where they came up with the idea of a photon. If you're an atomist, it's kind of like if you're a hammer, then everything is a nail. Yeah? You ever heard that one before? Well, if you're a stupid idiot, deeply embroiled in the BS of quantum, then everything is a particle! <laughs> so you go looking for particles, you're going to find particles. When they actually see rarefactions and compressions of the dielectric, i.e. the core, the uh, central coaxial of light, Oh, there we go. There's a photon particle. No, light's not a particle. Light has no speed. Sure it does. 186 does. No. That's a rate of induction. You could never explain the phenomena of light, specifically like when light passes through glass, depending on the type of glass, that slows down a significant percentage number. And then if you believe light is emitted from point A to point B, then light has to break the law of conservation of energy because it speeds back up after it leaves the glass. But that's not possible. The only way you could actually explain light slowing down and speeding back up, actually the rate of induction changing because everything's capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, and dielectric permittivity, is if you have an ether perturbation or a medium perturbation. And then it doesn't break any laws because nothing is moving. It's kind of like waves in the pond. Yeah, nothing is moving. It's a perturbation. Waves actually in the water, they don't. Unless they actually get near the shore where the, the, you know, the, the water depth uh, decreases, then they actually do move and break. But water in the ocean is just like pistons in a car. The pistons don't move this way. They move up and down like this, yeah? Same thing. Pistons, pistons in the ether, or the medium, if you will. So light doesn't have a speed. Light does not transmit from point A to point B. Yeah, they think light is something that's being emitted here and it's ending up here. That's not the case at all. Light's not a wave because there's no such things as waves. Wave is not a thing. A wave is what something does. That's a wave. See that? You see the wave here? Look, I'm making a wave. Oh, those are my hands moving. No, that's a wave. That's my hand moving. What is my hand doing? It's waving. There you go. A wave is not a thing. A wave is what something does. So light's not a wave. Light's not a packet. No? They always talk about light packets. Light is not a wave particle. Yeah? No. Light is not a duality. Well, there are no dualities in Mother Nature, natura naturans. That implies inherent contradiction. Light's a duality. Sometimes it's particles, sometimes it's a wave. It's all about observation effect. No, it's not. The universe can't exist that way. This is completely nonsensical. This, nonsensible. This is atomistic theory. This is still the belief that everything in the universe is bumping particles. That's why I call them the cult of bumping particles, because that's exactly what they are the cult of bumping particles. If you start out with a fallacious supposition about the nature of the experiment, before you begin the experiment, then everything is already flawed. 
So when we talk about the uh, double slit experiment, the experiment is here, and the effect is over here, is none of this matters because you've already started out with a bunch of... If you actually understand the nature of light, then explaining logically, sensibly, hyper-rationally the so-called double slit experiment is really, really easy! But it doesn't because everybody that wants to debate the wave-particle duality, which is not a duality, starts out with the false supposition that they understand what light is. And they don't! They have no clue in hell. Period. Anyway, I could talk about this for like hours. I hope you like these videos. If you do, you can click the link below. You can tell me how much you can't stand me. Tell me how much you hate me. Leave me a message. I hate you. You suck. Man, I hate you and your videos. They suck. <laughs> if they're so suck, why don't you disprove them? Good luck trying that one. Why don't you show me a virtual particle? As soon as someone shows me a virtual particle, I'm going to hang it up. I'm just going to quit. It's like, you're right. Here you go. Because this is what people... This is what the idiots in quantum say is going on between magnets. Virtual particles! Yeah, no. That's atomistic and it's ridiculous. You might as well say unicorns and leprechauns. Because that makes more sense than saying virtual particles. An arbitrary concept that has no basis in reality and not been the input or output of any experiment ever done. Man, these people are stupid.